Jen, and today we're looking at downward facing dog using a yoga strap off of a doorknob to create axial elongation and a little bit of traction. For this variation, we'll be using two yoga blocks for underneath our hands as well. For your downward dog in the yoga belt, you'll want to make sure that you have a belt that is longer than six feet. So I'm using a 12 foot belt. And you will also wanna make sure that you're using a Puna belt or an India belt that has a square closure as opposed to something plastic or a D-ring that could break or slip. To measure the loop, you will find a place where when you step in it, the belt is just say an inch or so below your frontal hip point. So that's how big of a circle you need. And then you will take the belt over the top of both doorknobs and underneath. To come into the belt, you will bring the belt over the top of your head. That's generally the safest approach. You can check to make sure that the belt is still looped on both of the doorknobs and you'll walk forward until the belt is taut. Match your toes and stand nice and tall. The belt is in your hip crease. So when you start to fold, the belt is right into the fold. Folding at the hip crease and you'll place the fingers on the block, keeping the spine nice and long. And then you'll place the hands down on the blocks and you'll start to walk your feet back. And you'll start to walk your hands forward. The blocks can go as wide as the mat. And the blocks, they may be on the high side, they may be on the low side. Right now, these blocks are on the medium side. So the height is medium height. And it's really just going to depend upon your spine and your setup. You want the blocks at the level that keeps your spine with the maximum length and elongation. And then here we can take some breaths lengthening. We can also take some breaths widening. You might want to spend a little bit of time breathing into your specific concavities. When you're in this downward facing dog, you really want to make sure that your neck is neutral so that you're not pushing down and keeping the back of your neck short. You're lengthening the arms. You're lengthening both sides of the neck. You're also pressing the hands down as the fingers reach forward. And you're drawing the upper arm bones back in to the shoulder socket. So there's reaching while you draw back, while you press down. You're not falling through the shoulders which really could be damaging to the shoulder girdle. Once you've been here for a while, to come out, you can start to bring the blocks back under your shoulders, bring the feet back under your hips, and you can find your half forward fold again. Lengthening both sides of the torso Keeping the neck long in the front and in the back. Notice that the belt is still taut. They still have a little bit of weight into the belt. And then placing the hands on the hips, you'll press your feet down as you bring your spine back up. And then to come out, you'll take the belt over the top of your head again.
Thanks for joining me today. Once again, my name is Jen Gorman. I am a patient, advocate, and practitioner for people with spinal fusions, scoliosis, and other back care needs. If you'd like more information, you can find me at scoliosisandbackcare.com. Thanks so much.